So, uh, good morning and welcome to all of you uh, to this 29th edition of the Logothermy Theatre Talk Series. Uh, many of you people are regular, so I need not introduce or tell what it's all about. Uh, today is the 29th talk, uh, which uh, Anami Hatsa, who is a very dear uh, theatre person with a lot of creative work, original idea, inspiring uh, to many people are here with us, so we are very, we have a very special uh, edition today. Uh, she started studying uh, in National School of Drama uh, with B.V. Karanth. So her first training means uh, was in NSD with B.V. Karanth. And from there she went to uh, the Russian Academy of Theatre Arts in Moscow, spent uh, six years there, had a very different, strenuous, meaningful training uh, from there. And she came, back, she came back, she has been teaching theatre in various institutions, uh, including NSD, BNA, Inside India, Outside India, outside India. In workshops, uh, totally different kinds of workshops. At least she has done two or three workshops in Kerala even. Uh, one with Nirisha, I think, and uh, uh, she has been doing it. So she has been a uh, theatre trainer, uh, theatre pedagogue, all these things uh, to, uh, with her. And besides that, she's uh, a theatre director who has uh, done very new kind of, very heartbreaking productions. Uh, remember Pinash uh, Pillai in his session, uh, speaking about uh, one of her productions which inspired him uh, to further proceed, Raj Darpan, how she has been uh, devising or designing or making that Raj Darpan to happen, which is based on uh, the Dramatic Performance Act of 1876. And uh, I, I remember that Abhinash said that you no, know, his theatre has been launched by that production. He was following a kind of inspiration which he found out. So there are many people like Abhilash who has been devising or molding the theatre based on Anamiga's work and her inspiration, her methodology. Uh, she has a lot of water. I remember uh, that's the only production I have seen. I'm lucky to see. It's about uh, the composition of water which like say a theatre installation kind of thing which she did in Binale, Cochin Binale, with actors, sculptors, designers, space management, theatre, philosophy, all these things coming together as a continuous, flexible, but uh, meaningful, uh, thought provoking uh, form. So, besides, there's a, remin a reminiscence of Krishna, Dakar by Tagore. Andar Yatra, based on Shilapadi Garam, which Umaji was speaking, uh, mentioning right now, a little before here. Uchaka, based on the autobiography of Lakshman Gekwad. Uh, so, her work covers a lot of things from text to dramatic act to autobiographies to uh, new ideas being performed. And uh, she has been doing it in different spaces, different places starting from theatre institutes to art exhibitions to uh, different places. And uh, she has done a film which is also moving a lot, discussed a lot, Khodeko Jilevi Khlane Leja Riyahum. It's again an experimental kind of work, a path-breaking work. So what we see is that you know, in Anamiga's work, she is working with a form the mode of making it, methodology of making it, and the content is also very radical. She speaks about marginalized life, marginalized people, people of the street, people uh, who are really important or subjects which are really important and connect to the, uh, her own ideology or all those things. It's, it becomes uh, a very kind, meaningful work in her approach, form, content, all those things. And it's very intense and dense also. So that's the way I could 
speak about her productions like that. Uh, she has been the recipient of Sanskriti Award for her contribution to theater. And uh, we will know much more about her. Today, uh, we decided to uh, stick on to a topic connected to theater pedagogy. We have not discussed that aspect in this 13, 29 talks, 28 talks which happened uh, before. Uh, so, uh, she has two three things like the training she got in National School Drama under Mimi Karanth and the training she got from the Soviet school, uh, which uh, very, very few people in India, I don't think there, there's, there's somebody else. The only one. There's the only person who has uh, done it in Moscow, which is totally different from, that's what I understand from the RADA or the American uh, kind of theater training, which we will be elaborating much on this session. And the relevance of that and what the theater pedagogy in India should be and how can it be in the contemporary period and time. So it's uh, taught about uh, theater pedagogy and theater teaching. It's a very important thing because, you know, there are more and more universities starting their courses on theater from uh, degree to PG to PhD to MPhil. But everything is uh, just, uh, I would say, confused and scattered, uh, scattered up. We don't have still a very clear idea. We need not have a one idea, but uh, it's all mixed up. But uh, so that's an important subject to be discussed. And I hope uh, we can uh, have a session. This session will do that. I don't take much time of her. Uh, and uh, I would love to have a discussion also after her talk. And uh, uh, she is there. So. Uh, welcome you to this and uh, when you're discussing when you're putting up a comment or question or anything like that please tell your name and place even if we know know you because it's going to be transcribed and edited and uh, put into a kind of book actually two volumes of book the first volume we are already you know, working on uh, so then if your comment or question is going on we would like to have your name also there so when you are doing it a little later, please see that you just give the name and uh, your place when you are putting it and be active. Uh, welcome. And I'll just uh, announce that the next Sunday, 11 o'clock, we have Prabir Guha, the important uh, theatre person, director from Kolkata, the artist director of Alternative Living Theatre is coming. And he'll be speaking on the legacy of Bengali theatre, uh, the Bengali theatre past and present. Uh, that's the topic he's going to address. So with this, I welcome everyone and uh, especially thank to Anamiga Ji for coming and uh, spending time with us. And uh, we have a lot of important people. I don't name them. We have got Kriti Jain, Sauti, Mangai, Kalerani, Ajay Joshi, and so many. I have not seen the full list. So many people are there along with uh, new enthusiasts here, enthusiast students. So already we have seen from all parts of the country and sometimes outside the country also. So welcome to this session and thank you all for coming in and hoping to see you again and again to Anandigaji. Thank you, um, uh, Chandra Dasan, because um, I'm really, really deeply honored by this. I also know that you've been carrying on ceaseless work for the awareness of theater, for discussion, for good theater consciousness and performance. So I am very grateful to be on such a platform. And um, as you said today, I will not concentrate so much on my directorial work. I may mention it towards the end, but I will definitely uh, concentrate today on training, on pedagogy, on you know ideas that emanated from my education, both uh, under Karan, under Badal Sarkar and Soviet Union and coming back and working under the invitation of uh, you know, Professor Kirti Jain when she invited me to evolve a method of training for uh, National School of Drama and then all over the country. So um, the first thing I would like to begin uh, my session is to quote something which I love very much from Rumi. Uh, he says, there are many different ways of looking at the mirror. The one who wants to see his face looks at the glass and the one who wants to see 
the heart looks at the essence. So to me, the training and theater training is to do with the essence of awareness. What is that awareness? The awareness of the body, the self, the deep inside, and also the political, social, economic awareness, uh, the grounding in the reality with which you live. So I'm, I've come to this after many years and I will now go back to the things which have provoked me. And um, I think today as nowhere before, uh, training and uh, relationship to context, your political, historical, economic, social has never been more relevant because today we are in the middle of you know fake news, uh, post-truth, all kinds of things which are being said, and the fight that we have to have as theatre people, and it is only theatre people, I think, who have the resonance, and it is only theatre which actually can't be faked, which can actually, through its community work, through its collective work, can actually uh, make a difference. Saying that, I would like to begin um, to tell you that um, Current, uh, I'm not going into the milieu, of course, uh, there was Al-Qazi Saha post-independence, there was Habib Tanvi, there was Kovalam Panikar. These were the people we grew up watching. But um, um, when I came in 79 to 82 uh, under Karan Ji, I think it was an amazing experience because he himself was someone who crossed boundaries all the time. He was someone brought up in a village in Karnataka. He goes to Banaras Hindu University. He learns Hindi better than even the Hindi speaking. He, uh, he translates from Kannad, Kannad to Hindi to back to Kannad. He uh, learns as a, under Unkarna Thakur. So he, he's, he knows Hindustani music. He knows Karnatak music. He knows folk music. So I'm trying to say that this is the personality. The personality who does not accept uh, you know, uh, any given boundaries, but is actually crossing. Post-independence, all uh, the practitioners, right from Al-Qazi Sahab to Habib Sahab to Kovalam Panikar, to everyone is also searching Indian identity. What is training? What should it be? And the first, uh, uh, you know, um, sort of ideas emanated from, uh, you know, from Rada, from Britain, which Al-Qazi Sahab was trained in. Habib Sahab was also trained in. Habib Sahab was revolting against it. And then Karanth, who was constantly questioning this training and trying to understand what is an Indian identity? What is it that, uh, you know, an Indian director, an actor uh, maybe should require? And I think um, what is very important is that um, he actually introduced uh, the understanding of folk and tradition, not as importing the tradition, but as using a tradition which will connect you to your people and also using the folk as a means of rupture because our folk traditions are very irreverent if you look at them. All of them, they're always questioning status, they're questioning hierarchy, a lot of the folk stories. I'm not saying everything is like that. And I think it was this irreverence that he wanted to bring into us. That is something which people don't mention. They just say, oh, he took a folk form. Oh, he did this. Because if you look at all his work, you know, he'll say, he'll, someone will sneeze. He'll say, choo, 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 He will, from that element of the ordinary, suddenly bring in uh, improvisations, um, rhythms, anything that will actually change and distort and bring in another meaning and break that previous meaning. He was the person uh, which now it's become very common. And of course, Kirti Ji there was uh, my teacher in uh, modern Indian history. And we all know that he is the person who set up this thing that we must travel to the pra traditional practitioners and folk practitioners. Respect for people who are the folk practitioners, but only to understand them as contemporary practitioners, not to import them, not to, you know, uh, just imitate them. So we, by batch, we actually went to Udupi and we worked under Shivram Karanth for Yakshagan and we stayed there for a month and a half. I think that was one of the biggest experiences for many of us. Many of us were from villages, many of us from urban areas to sit there, to go and talk to the artists, 
to respect them, to understand their processes of work, to understand their metaphors, their similes, how they work, how they're connected to their land. And we had to do a proper, you know, almost like a, a, a bound volume in which all of us, someone was doing on techniques of acting, someone was doing on rhythm, someone was doing on makeup. And I think this was a great uh, contribution of Karan, which I think works today. Even today, it's practiced by the people in the National School of Drama. We got to know forms like um, Thayyam, we got to know Krishna Parijat, we got to know Tala Madale, and we got to know the performers of these people. So we understood, and he always said that, you know, it's uh, a folk performer is like a very normal uh, human being. And then when they're on the stage, he cuts the uh, space like a sword. And, and he said that that is the essence of the way, uh, you know, um, folk practitioners look and, and, and perform. Um, he would use uh, music as a means of choreography. And he broke, um, all uh, tradition, he was not trying to make it musical or melodious, but he would try and use more music as a very fluid means of creating different spaces. So he never, at one level, we were being, you know, taught by uh, uh, Mr. B.M. Shah, who was using the sort of the, the, the given vocabulary of the time, which was more, more or less from, you know, the British school, but he was breaking it all the time, you know, Acha hao bhai, betho, come on, sit. Guys, now we're going to, we picked up the harmonium. So come on now, start, start moving. Start, this is the rhythm I'm giving you. What are you going to do with this rhythm? What are you going to improvise with this rhythm? Change the speed of this rhythm. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm playing this note for you on this harmonium. What does this note do to you? How will you practice? So our rehearsals were like that. There was no, not really much emphasis on analysis. There was a lot of emphasis on playfulness, you know, uh, moving fluidly on the stage. Um, and he would give us a lot of exercises on soundscapes, building soundscapes. If you're from a village, what is the sound you hear? What is the season in which you hear the sound? What is the space and distance from which you receive the sound? How do you break the sound? How do you put the sound in rhythm? So this was, uh, he, I don't think he actually had a method in that sense, but it was a sort of an anarchic, but very interesting and spontaneous way of working. And, um, he created everything out of you know very simple things and as all of you know it's become very famous now he had this famous kit which was produced out of garbage so you know one pencil one coconut uh, shell one uh, one one stone and put it together and create something out of nothing like the great uh, you know jazz musicians who when they were in prison they created sound of, out of their prison bars they created sound of the breath of their hard labor and i i somehow connected to that there was something uh, you know extraordinary about this kit uh, which was made out of nothing out of cellophane bags out of anything that you could get two stones two pieces of wood and i think this at that time we didn't realize we were like 2021 20, and now as you know uh, someone who has traveled through many years of theater i really understand what he was um, you know trying to do he um, i had the opportunity also of knowing uh, rithik ghatak he used to come to our house all the time because uh, he was very fond of my father and was always running out of funds anyway for his films. He used to keep saying, please, you know, can you, I don't have any money, can you organize some 5,000 rupees? It was a big thing in those. He sold his wife's jewelry to make a film. So, and Karanth was a bit like that. I mean, not in terms of money, but you know, suddenly he'd sit down with the harmonium in the evening, chalo, 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 let's sing holy songs, you know, holy ke gaane. Birju Maharaj comes, everyone's sitting on the harmonium in the night, everyone's singing these songs. So, you know, when I talk of pedagogy, it may not be a pedagogy which has been actually, uh, you know, has a very, very thought out framework, but it, I think it was one of the greatest uh, sort of pe pedagogical trainings for us to understand Indian music, to understand our uh, tr folk traditions, but from a very, very, you know, people's point of view, from the point of view of actually understanding it as a contemporary practitioner. Not just, you know, ki tamasha mein kar diya, is mein kar diya, you know. And I think uh, this is something which was uh, very, very important. He insisted, of course, on, uh, you know, uh, all of us being trained in either culinary or thangta, and of course, yoga, which was all the time done. And I think we suddenly started feeling a sort of a, a 
the smell and bustle and uh, you know uh, the perceptions of our country and he also dissolved the rule of having graduates along with us so we had people if you were the child of a practitioner of let's say kudi attam or yakshagan you did not have to finish graduation so we had a lot of people like uh, cr jambe who may not have done graduation i don't i'm not even sure but he was well versed in yakshagan so you are you are actually communicating to people from ladakh from uh, people uh, you know who uh, like our my uh, uh, batchmate who had sort of been working with all the masked dance forms there ritual forms you're communicating so you are being enriched and they are being enriched because you have come from an urban center you may be enriched maybe in your studies and your reading in your understanding of an urban culture which is of course brings me to the something which i mentioned in every talk which is that karan and i were at loggerheads in the beginning because there were the goddamn this urban woman doesn't know a damn thing she doesn't even know one folk song and at that time i would just cry but in the third year i would say why should i know a folk song why why i i know my songs i i know the, the songs in my street i'm I, i know classical music so but this these were debates these were debates which definitely fed me later in terms of what is the training for an indian director or an actor how much do you need and what are the you know tools that we need for that uh, training this raised the questions which i am you know uh, going to um, absolutely come back to i also think something uh, two things which stand out for me is that he knew his puran his upanishad he knew sanskrit but never have i seen him be religious there was no point in which he was being in any way religious and that's a very interesting pointer again that he knew his folklore he knew uh, you know all his traditional laws but he was never ever influenced or imposed any kind of religious authority on us the other thing which is important in today's day in which this kind of hindiization sanskritization he would say look you've come from different parts of india please don't please don't try and speak you know hindi shuddh hindi you know let it be cadences of your he himself had a very st strong you know uh, kannadiga uh, thing on uh, you know rhythm into his language please do not try and imitate but bring your cadences bring the way you emphasize uh your language so if you're coming from let's say assam you speak hindi that way it's a very big thing because which is now again you know we've always struggled with this in national institution that you know people are coming why are you all the time being subjected to this kind of you know hindi domination but at least i mean he couldn't change the hindi domination but at least he brought in the fact that let's bring in you know if you're if you're english speaking let's bring in that english speaking if you're from wherever you are bring in those cadences and that will enrich hindi he also when he went to bhopal he started training he did things in bundeli in malwani in um um in chatisgarhi he brought in languages of people and he recognized that, that that should become part of your pedagogical training that if you are working in a certain area use those languages use the idioms of those languages i think this is pedagogically uh, in terms of training something which was actually extremely extremely exciting for us to receive and um, with him also came a whole world um with him we got in touch with kv subanna who was working in the rural theater movement in karnataka we got in touch with ananta murthy we got in touch with girish kannad we got in touch with shankar pille and at this time of course all uh, you know we had utpal dat um, you know Sh shambhu mitra we had prasanna ranjit kapoor ratan thyam kanhai lal uh, you know povalam panikar robin das who was teaching there ramal alana kirti ji ankur ji bajaj uh, ibo thombi uh, you know and uh, jay shri uh, sardar hashmi um you know rudra prashad sen gupta all i am sure i'm missing out names please excuse me if i'm missing out names but there were people from all over india we had uh, you know madhavan chakya ramanur Ch so i mean suddenly you know you're being exposed to a whole world but i am as an urban practitioner from delhi i'm also questioning that you know uh, what more is needed do is this all right is this all so with this question is this all 
Uh, I'm lucky because Simon tells me that, you know, there is this wonderful scholarship in the Soviet Union and, you know, it'll be paid. You don't have to think. And it's six years. You should, uh, any of you should go from, you know, and, um, and so I am now I'm just, I've just briefly dwelt on current. If you have questions, we can uh, come back to because I have a lot to speak about. I uh, land up um, from here and I land up um, in Moscow. Now, I, uh, I have to tell you, and if any of you have uh, followed any of my previous uh, lectures, then where do I meet my classmates in Moscow? My dear friends, I meet them in a potato field. I meet them in a field, in, in a kheti, where they are actually digging and harvesting potatoes. Now you're saying, now what is the relevance to that with pedagogy? I tell you that this is every relevance to this with pedagogy. Because I suddenly realized that I am a good Indian intellectual who doesn't know how to use a shovel, who doesn't know how to do anything with the hands. And they were surprised. They couldn't believe that, you know, when they offered, they said, come on, join us, you know, let's do potato. I said, I can't. I don't know how to, you know, I don't know how to shovel the land. So this is the first pedagogical lesson for me, which is, how the Soviet training, and these are all theater people, musicians, circus people, they were connected to labor. They were connected to nature. They were, had knowledge of their soil and land. They knew the smell and fragrance. I mean, Karanth had told us about the smell and fragrance. We did exercises on this. But to actually connect every year for two months onto your land, you know, as a youngster, everyone is like 20, you know, 19, 20, to know every single tree is something I think this pedagogical regimen achieved. When you actually, you know, uh, pushed your young people and you connected them. And I think this was something which was extremely, extremely important. The first lesson of training as uh, inspired by the, the late Soviet Union, since the Soviet Union doesn't exist, and perhaps some of the best parts of a communist tr training, but the best parts. I mean, there are many things we are critical of, but this was something which is just beautiful, I feel. Um, every Saturday, every month, the entire student community gathered together and we worked physically, cleaning our hostel, cleaning our institute. Uh, if we needed to plant trees, we needed to plant something, we did this. And I feel philosophically, this is an extremely important part of our upbringing, of, of our outlook to life, to society, to people. Um, uh, the other thing which was fantastic was that the Soviets took great pride in their poets, writers, workers, if, along with our training, which I'm coming to, we always visited, we visited Stanislavski's house because of course, Gitas is, is, is an institute which teaches through the Stanislavski system. We visit his house, we place flowers every year, an old lady will come and tell you the stories. You go to Dostoevsky's house in Petersburg, they show you where he was meant to be hung, where he wrote. I'm saying, I find this pedagogically fantastic. Do we connect to our poets, our writers, even our theater people, you know, what they lived, what they gave. Uh, so I feel these are part of a very strong, you know, pedagogical uh, training and ethos and culture, which was part of, of the Soviet Union of that time. Now, um, now, I also want to, uh, before I come to the actual uh, thing is that, you know, people go on talking about this method acting. Now, from what I understood, and as I said, Chandra Hassan, I think I'm probably the only person who actually, only Indian who learned um, uh, the Stanislavski system from the Russians. Uh, and of course I converted it into things which I thought was useful for an Indian training. Now, when I was there, there was an sort of academic uh, Stanislavski, which is the Stanislavski, which I think that the Americans and the British really took to. But there was a whole stream which was represented by uh, Maria Osip Knebel, who was in fact alive when I was there. She was the student of Stanislavski himself. Vasiliev, these people were interpreting Stanislavski in a very internal way. Realism, which is not 
to be put like a formula, super objective. You know, why did you do this? What is the motivation? Yes, he spoke about it, but it was an experiment with human character. It was not something just to be laid down like a formula and then, you know, it's taught like that a lot. And I, I feel that that is something, and Michael Chekhov, who went into a very intuitive understanding of Stanislav. You had Mayer Hold, who was acrobatic, geometric, uh, you know, uh, biorhythmic, um, and the theater of Lyubima, which was very political, and it used, you know, the Soviet ideas of street theater, pantomime, acrobats. It was not realistic in the way, un way realism has been understood. So I'm saying already at that time, theater was very varied. All over the Soviet Union, theater was very varied. And we were studying at that time with Lithuanians, Uzbekis, Georgians, then of course, then you know, people from the Eastern Bloc, you know, Polish and Hungarians, uh, you had uh, Palestinian. So this, and you were suddenly studying this Stanislavski. You know, by the way, why do we need Stanislavski? Was the question many of us were asking. Now, do we need this kind of, um, you know, um, uh, uh, realism? But I have understood that the, the approach was absolutely marvelous. And also go into this, which is, first of all, all of us had like, we had gurus, we had four masters. And all of the four masters were practitioners. So they took you through your five years of practice. And they were very critical, they were very, but they looked after you as a child, you know. So you, you, you be, and you were known, you know, like we have gharana, so you are, you belong to this gharana, that gharana, third gharana. So Pamenko, Remes, so these were the masters that we were known by. So I will be known by, okay, she's the master, she's under the master Remes, you know. Uh, like, you know, here, um, let's say the master Karan. Yeah. Now, the, we were 24 people, uh, they were actors and directors working together. The idea being that the directors train with the actors and the actors, if they want to step into a direction class, they can sit there and hear those lessons or be part of those lessons. Uh, we, the first year, we only dealt with autobiography, no text, no written text. Pedagogically, I think it was amazing because you're delving into yourself. Who am I? What is my, uh, you know, improvisations on celebration, improvisations on sorrow, improvisations on sudden twists in your life, improvisations on music, rhythm, sculpture, improvisations on interpreting paintings, uh, in, you know, improvisation on your imagination, on architecture, on, and of course, this was supported like we have in all our institutions, whether it's Trishur or NSD or BNA, of course, we have the theory classes going on at the same time. But the thing is that the first idea of the education is, who are you? What is the self? How do you express yourself? What are your means of expression? How much are you connected to, you know, your being, your land? So I think this was what was the first part of the pedagogical training. Um, along with this, we were getting elements of acting all the time, you know, your, your concentration, your circles of attention, the many, I can't, I mean, it's like five years can't be condensed into a small talk. So I'm just sort of mentioning, uh, you know, the basic things. And it is only in second year that actually a local text is allowed. A local means, and that means a Lithuanian will take something from Lithuania, Georgian thing, Russian, Russian. So you start taking, but you do not take a full text. You take, let's say, two scenes from a text. And then you have, uh, which is again a very Soviet thing, you have um, a, a, a class, which is how do you, what is the ethics of dealing with actors? in which the directors come together and you talk about your problems when you're trying to you know, deal with actors, when you're trying to understand the problems which are coming out when you are actually working with them. And even the whole of first year, you're working with your batchmates, with, your, with the actors there. And, and so you have a whole ethics. How do you treat your actor? How do you treat each other? If there are any kind of issues uh, between us, we would solve them in this class of ethics. Um, you know, and the whole thing is that collective building. How do you build this collective? You know, how do you build, uh, you know, when there are people of different personalities, different kinds, and never were you told to, you know, homogenize the group. 
in fact, one of the great pedagogues of that time called Butchkevich, he would say, never build someone in your own reflection. Let each person be an absolutely original image of themselves. They may learn and your task as a director is open windows. Your task is not to make them into mini, uh, you know, mini replicas or clones of yourself or your teaching. So they must all, someone will be very realistic. Someone will, you know, be very, very acrobatic. Someone will want to go into an interior. Someone may do it complete physical theater, but your task is to give them the tools to be equipped, uh, equip themselves. Uh, of course, uh, there were a lot of amusing uh, sort of fights there because, you know, we have we have uh, the academic our teacher, Stanislavski, and then you have one Mongolian who's a nomad and he's saying that, uh, you know, he's taking half an hour to show how he roams about, uh, you know, uh, on his horse and how he's spitting for half an hour. And then he, you know, you're saying, but this is not Stanislavski. So we are saying, but why do we why do we need this? Time is different for each person, for Asians from different parts of the country, for people from industrial regions, from villages, time, the time factor, the seasonal factor, everything is different. So there were many arguments and, and, and I think these arguments with batchmates and the teachers and, and a lot of the great practitioners of that time also led us all to, you know, adapt and understand Stanislavski in our way. And, and that way was completely different from the so-called, you know, method acting. Because um, there may have been an emphasis on a very, you know, things like super objective, because you just remember that Stanislavski is born almost, you know, 1860s, 1938, it's the time of revolution, it's the time of great change. Things are, you know, all the time in flux. So he's going into that, he's going into this, that what are the contradictions? Where are you on edge? How do you do an acting which is multi-edged? And I think that's very close to an Indian actor. We, we are very happily, we can go into a very, very multi, uh, you know, switching of multi-genres, switching of multi-styles. And I think that's something which, uh, you know, the Soviets actually advocated. And in fact, the new interpretations of Stanislavski were going into that. They were saying that uh, one of the greatest teachers, again, uh, you know, and Vasily, they were saying it's very close to you. It's also through those exercises, you're sort of igniting a subconscious mind. It's like a Hatha Yoga. You know, you do those exercises, but you're igniting something deep within, a psychological process within the mind. Um, in the third year, you go into what is called hardcore analysis. Uh, in, in which you actually learn. Uh, now, this part is something which I have always adapted um, in, in India. I have used it. Uh, I will come to that. Uh, there it is like four months, you're like, you know, at the table and you're trying to understand the text in all its, in its forms. But the understanding is all the time corroborated like a laboratory. So if I'm saying that, you know, the, you know, orchard is being sold and let's say this woman Raneska has no money, but she's throwing money everywhere. You have no money. You know, I have many friends like that in India with no money, but you know, the, the, the fear of not having money, you sometimes just spend because you, you have that fear. You have that fear of missing out on a meal. Like this lady, uh, you know, um, who used to work as a, uh, as a warden, uh, Teotia Zoya in Moscow. She said, you know, she was huge. And a lot of Russian uh, uh, people are huge. And she said, you know, Anamika, sometimes in the war, we knew we are not going to get our next meal. You know, we, they, we've seen days of hunger. We've seen days of starvation. And you eat so much, you know, uh, so as not to stay hungry on the days that you have food. So, you know, it's also very interesting, uh, uh, this thing of, uh, of edged playing, of contradiction. And this is something which I think very important in, in the Stanislavski analysis, which is not spoken about. All we say is what is the motivation? Why did the person come? Why did the person? It is not like that, actually. It is very, very, um, um, <clears throat> it is very subject to human nature, the human vagaries you're saying something, but something else is going on. So many things are working on you. And to me, that play analysis is really 
like just now we all you know said hello to each other and you said you know i'm doing this i'm doing you know that i've come from this teacher that is what a play analysis is it's an introduction and respect given to each person as chandrasan is saying that like yeah we are all friends or we feel aunt you know i'm saying like this is my teacher this is what is it that is what a play analysis is it's not something which is be taught on a blackboard it is something to be felt understood who am i what are my habits where do i come from remember that the czar is going you know the working class is coming the peasants are coming you have to understand who the person is in front of you if i'm to tomorrow doing a dalit text how am i going to enter if i am one upper caste woman how am i going to enter that space if i don't know the habits the economic background political background social background what are the conditions in which the person lives that is how you look at sir it is not like you know a pedantic thing and and i i, I feel that this is a very important tool which has been made a bit of a mess of by by the west you know um, the other thing which was very important uh, is that you were attached in your third year to a very well known director whoever you wanted to go if you found yourself close to let's say someone who is closer to brecht then there were you know you there were 40 repertory companies in moscow and all over soviet union there must have been like 3 400 companies doing theater even in the most interior regions so you go and you keep a direction diary so if i'm working you know i'm saying i'm going to work under Chand, you know chandradas and i'm going to work under uma ji i'm working under kirti ji i have my diary and for two months i am observing their processes of work and i'm keeping that diary you know and then i'm showing it to my teacher and saying you know this is what i've learned this is what i felt was great you can talk to the director and have issues you can argue again a very important pedagogical tool a very important part of training where you learn to respect all the people who have been working uh, you know to advance the language to move the language of theater in your particular country um it is only actually um uh, it is only really in the fifth year that you are allowed to go public but the training was that every week you must show your work to your four teachers so every week whether you're in first year second year third year fourth year you are showing your work to teachers and the end of every year all we had a big hall and all the batches and we were five years so and two batches per year so you know 10 batches would come and see your work so it was like a public performance but you were not allowed to show anyone from outside and it was very it was very sharp and very um, hard you know hard but never harsh or humiliating you were told that you know i once uh, tried to do something and uh, you know my teacher actually uh, you know just threw the stone and and said what are you what is this what is this ill truth there's no truth in what you are doing you know and hit the truth it can be through any form you do whatever you want but i want that truth coming out so there were a lot of discussions like that and you, you know you were taken uh, uh, through that um and in your fifth year you were attached to a professional theater company and um uh, uh, you have you were thrown into the sea like you may be 28 or 29 and these were like professionals so there was a lot you have to deal with them their egos and i was attached to um, a company which dealed with plastic theater a theater which only deals with the body so after five, four years of or five years of studies lives i'm attached to a theater which doesn't use text at all it's only working with the body with poetry with metaphor and visuals and my guru uh, gedrus matskai which was who i really liked uh, and loved and who's died now all my all of them have died but you know he he just pushed me into the deep water he says i've been teaching you go come on you work with my company and you know to you are an indian how do you explain to these russians and then you know they are also been some of them are very pedantic and academic some of them are fantastic they're all doing movement but how to find a metaphorical way of explaining uh, what you are doing so i'm saying that these were some of the very important uh, you know questions that were raised i mean this is a very uh, detailed journey i mean if i start getting into every exercise we'll get very bored or uh, there isn't much time so i'm giving you the sort of very basic um, uh, kind of um, things now the other thing philosophically i find uh, the soviet training was very close to the indian training and very different from the west 
is that the body was very important. The for the even people who were, I had very good friends who were musicians and they would play the piano like that. There was no they, you didn't play the piano like this. You know, like you're detached. You know, my speech is here, my voice is there, the entire body. So you had to do acrobatics. You had to be the whole body was involved with your text. There was no thing of you know which was very a very British imperial thing yeah because when you rule the world you you know you kind of have your water and then you can you just speak there but here you everyone every part of you is sweating out and I think that was very close to us who come from such a deep tradition and uh, you know of the physical in manifested in all our folk and traditional forms and contemporary forms um, so. Um, so this is very, very briefly, uh, some of the main highlights of the Soviet training. Um, now, um, when we come, when I come back, this is already 88. Um, I'm not talking about the direction part, uh, just I may talk a little bit about for it for the processes a little later, again, on, from the pedagogical point of view. Uh, Kirti ji um, um, actually uh, was the director of the National Student Bar and she said, will you please come? I think we need to do a rehaul of how things are being taught. We really need to think, you know, so, and then being, having had Badal Sarkar, Karanth, and now this very modern, Soviet uh, sort of training, I think, so she said, will you please sit down uh, with Vijayaji? ji, will you please now figure out a way of training which is Indian and yet it is contemporary and yet it is now different from let's say 30 years ago. So that was a real, real challenge. What is it that you actually bring in to train directors? What is it that you actually bring in to train uh, mm -hmm. actors? Also a big question, uh, which is something I'm again uh, all the time saying is what is Indian realism? Is it just this kind of copying of you know naturalism uh, in the way that was almost there in you know a, a sort of like a prevalent uh, way of of directing, or do we create a hybrid Indian realism? We use multiple languages, multiple genres, and. Uh, uh, with a body which is uh, of an actor and of course a director. I think a director has to know acting. Uh, very, uh, so we can go into the psychological, but yet the body can actually transform from real to, you know, to folk, to traditional. What is that training? And what is that Indian director and actor that we need to create, to create a absolutely contemporary language? This was really exciting. And since Keithi is here, I really uh, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to think and apply all these methodologies and, uh, and work. <clears throat> I was, of course, had, uh, you know, Khalid Tayyabji with me, I'm talking about the visiting faculty, the permanent faculty, of course, um, uh, had a lot of stalwarts. We had Robin Das, Anuradha Kapoor, we had Uttara Bhaukar, a lot of people uh, which uh, Kirtiji had brought in. But I think the way of thinking uh, actually um, started changing. Now, <clears throat> personally for me, uh, fr from the Soviet tradition, there was no concept of blocking. Uh, that was that was something that we were following in India before I left, which is that stage right, stage left, stage center. The concept was of mise-en-scene. You charge the actor in your way. You have to have the skills, whichever way, to start working on himself or herself. How do you, how does the actor actually get charged enough to start taking on the space? And then therefore the space is a space in which you, in a completely exploratory space, you do not know the beginning, you do not know the middle, and you do not know the end, actually. You don't know what, what's going to happen because once you say uh, the, you know, you have the right key to the actor, the actor takes over. So, you know, first of all, you dispel completely with the centralization of the director. You, you become a collaborator with your actor. You start working together with your actor. Um, then, um, uh, so stage geography is being replaced and um, there is no sort of static concept uh, of stage space, which is already being challenged uh, by many directors already. I mean, Ratan Thiam, Kanai Lalji, uh, already were sort of uh, Karanji himself. So I'm saying it's not that this is something, but I'm it was trying to be imbibing it into a sort of a way of um, of teaching. Um, uh, 
within the Indian context. Um, so I uh, uh, devised certain exercises. I will go quickly into some of them, which is something which we actually taught. And let me tell you that it was very difficult because we had, uh, you know, we had the old guard, uh, you know, which was still teaching. The, but this system then, you know, under <laughs> he had to do a lot of backing for a lot of us younger people who were trying to bring in, you know, another way of working under which we had all these lovely young people who are today great uh, directors like, you know, Abhilash, Royston, Chatanu, and a lot of people today who are. Uh, you know, who worked under this system and have come out. So the first thing that I um, introduced was, uh, you know, in the first year you have the actors and directors working together. And though we are ultimately leading to the directorial training, we are working on smell, taste, visual, touch and sound. We are working on sensory, uh, you know, perceptions of life. We are working on um, an image of your home. Now, something which bothered me during my days at NSD was that, uh, you know, some people from different backgrounds were sometimes, you know, um, were embarrassed by their background, even including me. I was also embarrassed by being a middle class. I was like, where do I hide? You know, what do I do if I'm from a middle class bank? What do I do? You know, but so I wanted a system by which a person who is from a village, from a rural area, someone who's a Muslim, someone who's a Dalit, someone who, they should feel when they come to an institution, in, it should not be just haphazard like it was, but it should, there should be a feeling that what I am, I am strong in what I am. You know, I am, I stand firm on my feet. So home image was a very crucial thing, which I actually, uh, you know, I gleaned from, uh, you know, from Moscow, from things that I learned, in which you actually go back and you create an image without using text of your home your parents, it could be your grandparents, but in, and it should not have any text in it. So you create a certain, uh, you know, symbol, lovely to see Robert Jita there, who was, was also wonderful uh, and great director doing great work in the Northeast. And um, so I'm saying that, um, so you, you look back into your region and the emphasis was that wherever you are from, if you are from the Northeast, you're from the South, you're from the West, Please believe in your background. Please believe in yourself. Please believe in where you are from and get the textures, the color, the sounds, the sensory perception of, uh, you know, uh, your region, yourself and your being, your home. And through this exercise, we were very strict about the things like people just tend to use anything. So what are the colors, textures, embroideries? Uh, you know, architectures, what are the things that you are using? So it, so uh, we introduced that uh, geometrical and architectural awareness of your region of from where you are, unashamedly talking and showing work. But like there were many people, not only in NSD, but later they're saying, you know, we felt very embarrassed, like because our parents are farmers and we they look after cows. Can we show that cow? You know, we feel embarrassed. How are we going to show this? I said, please show anything. You stand respected, whether you are showing that your parents are from, you know, are beggars, whether you show that your parents are kings. No one is given any due advantage or disadvantage from where you are. I think this was important, uh, very important politically, socially, and also um, from the point of view of training of uh, the actors. The actors uh, uh, worked out on calling out their names. Uh, when you call out your name, you call out automatically your parents name your grandparents name you connect to your land to your childhood your background you were we were uh, i spoke about compositional elements elements of color space we spoke about which is of course definitely coming from karanji about the sound of your own home the sound of the your the outside the sound of maybe the political sounds of your area, of your country, of your region, you know? So again, the soundscape is connected to from the personal and it starts going, you know, national, or if you need, it may even go, um, you know, global. And uh, my main thing is that 
let's not, as it is, you know, when we come from different areas in NSD, you know, there's a huge amount of conflict, not that that conflict has been resolved. Because, you know, either you become, you know, like I remember I had uh, my student um, in the 94 batch, Raj Kumar, who uh, from Manipur, and there was so much he had to deal with, you know, and he had to deal with the fact that, you know, they would call him chinky or they would do this. There was this insult. How to, you know, make him, someone like him, someone like him feel that respect, not feel degraded, not feel that, you know, like the typical centralist North Indian uh, attitude. And I think that was very, very important, um, you know, some of these exercises. Uh, after that, we worked on proverbs. What are, for example, uh, you know, uh, what are the proverbs in your area? Because there's always in the proverb, there is a very strong, um, you know, visual uh, element. Um, so one, they would divide into two groups. One would do a proverb, the other one would guess the proverb. So you get connected to your language and then for different people have different proverbs. You know, so if you are from, let's say, Assam, or you're from, let's say, Manipur or Mizoram, and you have a different philosophy which guides the visual of the proverb. And if you're from the South, it's very different. So working on proverbs, working on poetry and haikus. Now, um, for example, uh, which teaches you uh, a level of abstraction. Um, one second, let me just see if I can actually, uh, you know, find some of the things that we uh, worked on. Uh, well, I'll just come back to it when I find it. I'm, I'm not somehow finding the thing. Um, then uh, we worked on haikus, we worked on proverbs, we worked on vachanas. Uh, so this was very, very small, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, bits of, and, and phrases of poem in which the actor and the director has to express themselves also in a visual way or in a textual and learn philosophical and abstract thinking, which is, I think, something which is part of India. I think our people, our tribal paintings, our rural work, you will see that there is a huge amount of abstraction which is something that today, you know, mass consumption, television, all this and commercialization is just taking it away. You talk to ordinary people uh, on the road, in the villages, they still talk in parables and idioms. I wanted our students to actually get a sense of those idioms and, uh, and, and with a lot of fun and, you know, guessing and, and games and so to, to be uh, in touch with that. We also, also brought in, um, solid work on paintings across, uh, you, it could be any kind of painting. How do you interpret a painting? How do you look at a painting? What does the painting say to you? Who are the painters in India, uh, you know, who speak to you? And um, moving sculptures, rhythm and tempo, your own rhythm, the rhythm of your area. Sometimes, you know, someone comes uh, from a very interior tribal area in Jharkhand, you know, and he, he wants to show, you know, that his mother is actually, there's just nothing in the house. It's just corrugated, uh, you know. Um, this is also the greatness of something like energy that you get people from all backgrounds, but they don't get to, you know, express themselves in the way they should. So that respect and, and, and you know, and I remember this one student just going, there was this place behind uh, Bhavalpur house and he just showed these corrugated tin places. And he was obviously from a tribal background which had been just shoved, uh, you know. In, into the edges and he was there in these corrugated things. His mother was just cooking empty, you know, uh, just rice gruel, like a kanji, you know, and eating that. So just the rhythm of that eating and all that. So this was something which was very important. I, I think we tried to, um, uh, try to bring in. Of course, there were a lot of fun games, you know, things like um, uh, moving from fast to slow, you know, thieving, things on, you know, on reflexes, on actions, on, on um, um, being stupid and you know uh, dancing together, working in a collective together, uh, you know. So they were um, working on genre and style, and ability of the actor to move from very real to very fantastic. The director to move that you take a real action, convert it into something absolutely fantastic, you know, so that the imagination expands. So I'm actually taking what Kalant is saying, but I'm actually now sort of dealing with it in a contemporary interpretation. 
and uh, so that you you either there's a method of trying to bring it out you know um and uh, but the method is not like saying this is it and that is it no i'm happy to see uh, you know robajita here she will say that each person uh, was allowed to be their own person you are from there please come from there if you are abilash from kerala come from there you royston from uh, you know kanur uh, wherever you are palghat you come from there you are anirudh from thing each has their own style someone is very realistic someone is very symbolic someone is already you know extremely um uh, you know um sort of surrealistic someone clings to a kind of realism okay that's what you want to do but i am giving you the tools to open out to express what you have uh, in 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 your region mm. uh, there was a lot of work um um uh, 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 on on gestures, and I would work. This is not only with NSD, but this is also outside when I work with very different groups. So I, I worked with ritual gestures, naturalistic gestures. Now today I'm also uh, evolving something to work with the modern gestures. You know all this, all this business, all the, the there are canonized modern gestures today, and that you know there's a mode of expressing yourself in these particular gestures, and. Um, so we worked on that playing with nature becoming water wind fire water earth of uh, using folk stories sometimes just to expand uh, you know the imagination for example there is uh, something which i used in the bhartendu natya academy in which uh, you know there are two wrestlers and they can't find any space for example i'm just giving you one line of it so they say okay uh, they find one woman crossing so they say uh, you know nani just stop and bring out your palm and the both the wrestlers get onto the palm of her hand and they start wrestling there and then something comes their way then the whole village gets into a watermelon do you understand i'm just so it's not that the folk but the folk imagination a lot of people now because of television that, that imagination of moving from one to the other to the thing to expanding your imagination Uh, so we i used a lot of work from folk forms especially when i go to areas which are like sanehalli in karnataka or you know where people are coming from rural areas and they enjoy uh, you know a lot of these transgressions because it's part of their culture but they are made to forget when they come to a, let's say a mainstream area working with music and and uh, you know using music as a means to um um as a means to uh, composition understanding what composition is then this all was sort of using indigenous games rituals local traditions to enrich yourself so each of us had traditions that we come from we've all played kabaddi or pitthu someone has played uh, you know with sticks someone has played with something use all these traditions when you go back to an area you're work doing workshops please use your local traditions you know your local games to be and to create a liveliness and training for your actor and for your director it is in the sec so these were all the gamut i mean again as i'm saying that there was much more than what i'm mentioning i'm mentioning some of the major exercises and every week again i kept that system of thing every week you had to show and um, every two months uh, all the teachers gathered um kitty ji will remember that and uh, you know we would all gather and we would see everyone's work and you know there would be a very lovely discussion on each person on their growth where they're reaching and uh, so that all the time and i would arrive at any time in the night sometimes just to see their work you know so you're doing this okay let me see you know and never tell them what to do or how to do i would just say no this is not working try and work it again second year uh, um uh, we introduced actual text uh i would work with something like chekhov because he's he kind of crosses it's a kind of realism which can very be suitable to an indian realism um so there we actually took one scene but all the directors had to interpret that one scene in myriad ways and they would have to use their um um uh they would have to use their co-actors and they had to train how to work with actors 
So night, whole night, whatever they did. And I would just visit them and say, this is working, that's not working. You have to figure out for yourself. And um, right. And I, and I, so uh, the, by the end of these two years, you know, the practitioners have already, you know, learned to uh, be on the floor, to perform, to face criticism, to face discussions, to, you know, to, to hone their creative energies, both as actors. And in the first three batches, I, I stopped it afterwards for lack of time. I would also bring in one class a week for the actors that, you know, what are your problems? What, how are you facing, uh, you know, working with your uh, directors or just, you know, you know, doing simple exercises, opening them up. So uh, this was a sort of a pedagogical, uh, roughly a sort of pedagogical system um, uh, that I, we used. And um, uh, I'm, I'm, again, I'm saying it's all very rough and, and, and uh, you know, this thing because we, for, for lack of time, we're already entering. I will close, uh, Mangai had asked me a question in, uh, in which she was saying that when I work on my own work as a director, and um, I will ask uh, Chandradasan after this, just to, we won't dwell on it, quick, have a quick show of some of the work, but is that, that is very different from, uh, uh, you know, uh, this pedagogical work, the pedagogy there is that the rehearsal space is a dynamic space of change. The space becomes a space in which you, when you come, like suppose I'm dealing with Raj Darpan, uh, you know, 1865, the dramatic performance act, we're talking about colonialism. We're talking about black and white. We're talking about racism. We're talking about, uh, you know, legal proceedings, uh, what the British understood, how the proscenium comes in, uh, you know, social stories of the British. So I am doing exercises. Like for example, I did exercises on, um, uh, it was an exercise called fence in which the people who protect the powers uh, are, uh, you know, the British Raj and the people who oppose the past, so they have to jump the fence and some people have to protect the fence. We also played a football match between different, let's say, English speaking uh, public school and, uh, you know, a government school. What is the kind of clashes it brings in? What is, uh, what happens, you know, when you, uh, when you speak English and you are actually uh, from a Hindi medium? or when you have to speak Hindi and you are from, you know, another re uh, region of India. So what are the conflicts which are produced uh, giving, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, the situation of the text and you have to change along with it, you have to question yourself. So that happens when I work as a director with my own group, like let's say, um, um, Anga, you were saying, how did you bring it in, for example, in Uchakka or water? Now, he, Uchakka was, uh, had to ha happened to be the NSD and, and Many, many of them had no idea, uh, you know, of what the community uh, Utsalya goes through. So we had asked Lakshman Gaikwar to get the pickpockets to actually train people and not train. So it becomes, shouldn't become a fun that, oh, let's pickpocket. But what hunger does to you? What happens when you cannot cross any threshold because you are afraid? Exercises on fear exercises on crossing boundaries, exercises on entering a temple when you, are, uh, 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 when you come from a community which is not allowed to enter that temple. Do you so we did exercises on, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, in water, for example, on thirst. You are thirsty, but you're not allowed to drink that water which is near you, but you have to travel for five kilometers. So I'm saying when I work as a director, then I work very differently because the pedagogy is also to get closer to the text and also to the, the process of the, um, um, of the working space is a dynamic process. It's a process of change and transformation. It should not just be doing a play, you know, doing it well, but a process of questioning transformation. Every play I devise, I'm not going into this because I've given a separate lecture on this, um, but we devise exercises and means of choreography and movement each time the a play comes. So you will al almost find a very different, uh, you know, choreographic uh, composition for each uh, play uh, that you see. I think uh, with this, I will um, actually uh, finish the talk. I, uh, Chandras, if I could just request you to just very fast show some of the works and I won't talk about them. And I will just a little bit of the Soviet, uh, just those two, three photographs which I sent you. Is it possible or are we very late?
Oh, you're muted. Can't hear you. Hello, hello. Huh. Yeah, I could, I could, I'm not able to show that because I couldn't get it into that format that can be shared. Oh, no. Acha. Okay. So nothing, none of the photographs? Yeah, I have some photographs that we see with me. Ah. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Give me two minutes. Uh, I wish uh, I'll try to. Okay, so we can uh, maybe begin uh, questions and answers, and then if you can get it sorted in five minutes, we'll show. If otherwise, it doesn't matter because this is on pedagogy. I just kept this as an additional thing because, you know, talking and at once when you see someone's work, you understand what they're That's right. That's right. That's right. Let me, I have collected some photographs, but those photographs which you send me, huh. I have already that, some of them, but uh, it was a shared kind of thing. I couldn't download it. Oh. I tried. Oh, oh, I see. I am also not very good with this uh, technology. That's the problem. Uh, and even the Soviet, uh, the Soviet photographs which I had got. That's a. Um, uh, yeah. Let me see what I have. I have got okay. it. So does I? I think I have sort of dealt with a, a sort of a rough uh, thing of the pedagogical training. There's lots more as I can tell you, but I mean, really, in an hour, I cannot go into a five-year uh, uh, training. But so if there are questions uh, you want to ask or there are things, there's much more. Uh, there are all the people who were actually uh, there at that time. There's a lot. But um, if there are certain uh, you know, specific questions, it would be good because I've already crossed an hour now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Jolie. I can, I can see you. Come on, please ask questions. Please do ask uh, any questions, anything. Yes, you please. Um, Anamika ji, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for this very enlightening uh, kind of a talk. Um, uh, the, the question which comes to my mind, I'm also teaching here. Uh, considering the diversity that we have uh, in our country and when we are trying to design some kind of a curriculum, uh, can they be something universal, uh, one, or should there be some basic foundation on which each region develops their own pedagogy, uh, especially when you're moving from one uh, region to the other? How, how would you look at this? Well, I will answer you this question uh, because, um, in fact, uh, under Kirti ji and then Anuradha Kapoor, they have been region. The idea was to have regional uh, uh, repertory companies, and I have worked in uh, in the Bangalore. Can you hear me? Can yes, you hear yes. me? Yeah. Yes, yes, so yes, yes uh, Yeah. So uh, we worked in Bangalore in the regional company. We've just now I did something with the Maharashtra School of Drama, which is also an idea. I worked in Kerala. I worked all over. Now the thing is. Uh, what I'm saying to you is very universal. The training uh, on poetry, the training, I, in fact, uh, that's what I'm trying to say, which is, I mean, because when you're working in, in NSD, it is it is with all over and with Bharti Hindu, these are institutions which from all over. So there is a general exercises of, of self-awareness, of awareness of, uh, you know, your environment, of, of texts which belong to your region. There is a sound and taste and all this, which I've just gone into. I mean, I've just actually gone into that, is that these are all universal exercises of training. And then when you enter a particular area, let's say, you know, if I'm coming to Maharashtra, like when I just did it, we did a lot of work on opening up the students who came from rural backgrounds in, um, in, in, in Maharashtra. So for one and a half hours, I would just open them up on sound, music, playfulness, games, you know, imagination. So because the first thing is a human being who's awake, a person who is awake to all things happening inside and outside. And then you can start bringing in, you know, I brought in, uh, let's say, uh, Pachupate, who's a coal miner, who's a painter from Maharashtra. Then we bring in, you know, Uchakka by Lakshman Gaikwar. Then you can bring in specific, uh, you know, traditions of that region. But of course, you have there has to be very uh, universal things of training. I mean, which is exactly what I've actually dealt with for the last one hour, which is, you know, and and that uh, that training is of the body. It is of speech. It is of, um, of fencing, acrobatics, dancing, sensory perceptions. All these are uh, you know universal uh, things. Thank you, ma'am. Southy, I just sorry. Uh, you know, I forgot to say that something very interesting here was that, uh, you know. Um, 
there was a separate institute for lighting and there was a separate institute for design. So it's very interesting that you actually didn't learn lighting and designing when you were doing only direction. That's quite fun. I mean, I mean, I find that interesting. We had done it as in NSD, of course, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, but when you go for your diploma work, uh, you know, in, in your fifth year, then a light designer who has trained for five years and a scenic right. designer who's trained for five years is attached to you. Right. So, you know, there's a lovely discussion between you as a director, then that person who's the designer, they're helping you along. In fact, they're also telling you the new vocabularies in lighting and designing. So that's something I forgot to say in terms of the training there. Just right. Right. Now let me let me try. Uh, there are two questions already typed. Uh, going before going to that, let me try to screen share uh, and show the photographs which I have. Okay. If it happens, it happens. Otherwise, we can go into the questions. Yes. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. How to. Can you see this? Uh, I think this is from the water. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. It can be seen, Chandra. Yeah. So that's the one I have. Joy, for. Priyanka, Joy from Manipur, Priyanka from Bangalore, Amit Sao from Delhi. Yeah. Next, this is Water, which was on Namdev Dasal's poem on how people are being actually uh, from uh, lower caste communities are deprived. So this is fresh water there. Uh, this is a sort of like almost like uh, you know a place where the Buddha journeys. We use different concepts of the Buddha there, the Buddha which is also going through agony as he sees this caste system. Um, you know, so anyway, I'm not going into that. I'm not going. I saw a direction lecture today. It's on pedagogy. I just wanted to you to see it because then it just puts you into. It's also. Can you see this right now? Another still from the water, I think. No, this, no, we have we can't see the second still. This is the first still which we are still seeing on your screen, Chandra. No, we can't. Heavy work here on the body because the language of the poem is lambasting. He lambasts society. He lambasts the world. So how pedagogically, when you're working with the actors, how do you find the equivalent language in the body of the actor, which can also lambast the system. Because he's, you know, Namdev Dasal's poetry is, is a complete protest and he, he doesn't stop at anything. He just doesn't stop at anything. So to find that language in the body of the actors was a very big pedagogical search, which we all did. Uh, if you see it in movement, which you can see on a little bit on YouTube, then you will see the, the thing is, is constant, very hardcore, you know, uh, physical metaphorical work with the body. We have Adira there also, but she's not here in the photo. Okay, so should we forget about the Chandradasan then? Yeah, I'm trying. Let's come to the questions because that's, I mean, that's really what the, this was just an additional, uh, you know, to, to place uh, the talk in something. I just like to, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not a question, it's just, just a comment. Uh, basically, you know, sort of, I want to say that and share the fact that, you know, this syllabus input, or let's say the new inputs that Anamika and a lot of us who were collaborating on making the new syllabus uh, brought in and the specific exercises that she's talking about brought about a huge change in the um, in the approach to theater i mean it was successful in bringing that change you want to talk about this photograph oh, ma'am you you talk please <laughs> um, and uh, i have a you know sort of my feeling is that a new language of theater emerged uh, as a very specific entity from that point onwards so, um, you know, sort of the batches that came after this in these inputs were introduced. Um, I think that they really made it that much more personal to each, each performer. And as she said, they learned to respect the, the backgrounds that they came from. And therefore, it gave rise to a variety of theater languages. I mean, they, they got the confidence that what they're coming with also has value and therefore uh, allowed us to then deal with that as as individual languages. Otherwise, there was always this fear and always also a reality 
that we were trying to, you know, or that it was becoming more and more uniform. People could identify that, okay, this is the NSD language. Exactly. Uh, but exactly. it became different uh, from this point onwards. And we find it in the works also of the people, uh, younger people who have been, uh, you know, trained at that time. So, for instance, Royston would have a completely different way of, uh, you know, expressing and Rabbi Jita would have another way and Abhilash would have another way. Because even if they were coming from the same region, they were responding to different things. And I think that's a very valuable thing for any institution to be able to retain the individuality and retain the cultural um, specificity of where the person is coming from. And I think that's something we really need to Thank you, Namika, for... No, um, okay, and also okay, I don't the want this to turn into a mutual thing, but I do take this opportunity because, you know, life is short. And I really take this opportunity that the way you backed some of us who were really, we had just come out, like, you know, Khaled and, um, you know, Arjun and me, and you backed us. It was very difficult because remember that the old school was also there. So, and here we were trying this, you know, and, and we were being critiqued left and right and center. But so she was actually supporting us trying. And this period is a very important period, which has not been recorded in the history of national school drama, very quickly dismissed, but it's one of the most important periods. First of all, centralization is going into decentralization. The region is coming up very strongly in a proper thought out method. People have distinct styles and, and, you know, and this is a vision, which I think we got perhaps from Karan, but we, and under uh, Kirti's direction also gave it a form. And later then uh, they were joined, uh, you know, uh, Nasir joined in the third year. And then, you know, uh, of course, Anuradha was there in, as, a, as a permanent faculty, but the, this whole vision of an Indian theater with variety, with genres, styles, different training is definitely something which what happened in uh, Professor Kirti Jain's time, and she is responsible for that vision, uh, you know, of an Indian theater with variation. And of course, it's always, you know, uh, in theater history, I feel it's a very important period, which is sometimes, you know, but because it was decentralized and we, you know, she didn't believe in making a cult or, you know, making this single, you know, uh, figure, uh, sometimes it sort of gets uh, swept away. And this is important uh, that you actually had that vision allowed. And we continued that tradition, uh, which was also given to us of working in regions, going out there, getting people involved, creating a, a medan of consciousness, you know, which is what Karan said, now create a medan, create a field of consciousness, create a field of awareness, uh, you know, and I think that is where uh, that vision had come. And, um, and, and I'm very grateful that I came in exactly at this time and, you know, it, and we were supported and a lot of different kinds of works came out. And uh, so that's really important. And I really want to thank you for or uh, you know, enabling all of us to do that. Yeah, not now continue because it really sounds like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't want this an opportunity. We don't that. get it very often. You know, that's why. Uh, now, Shivani, there. There's a question which Shivani has typed. Why not you come directly and ask? Shivani. Please ask. Please ask lots of questions. Can you unmute and ask Shivani? Hello. Yeah, Hello, ma'am. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, uh, ma'am, you have talked about intuitive understanding of method, method acting. So could you please explain a little, little bit more about it with some uh, example? It's not yeah, clear. I'm trying to explain to you that um, in the Russian system, there is nothing called method acting. This is Lee Strasberg who called it method acting. And, uh, you know, and it was convenient because it was like almost became a formula. But Stanislavski was an actor. He was going into a journey of how to express life in its varied forms. So he did put up a way of looking at it. And I am definitely, I have trained under that system. But I object to it becoming this very linear way which some people use it. Uh, what are you doing? What is your motivation for coming here? I don't know my motivation, you know. What I'm trying to say is that the Russian system was also allowed you to be uh, anarchic, to have various ways in to do the same thing, 
it had you could do let's say if i just ha if i'm saying that i am hungry and i need to walk for you know two days so that is you know so what happens like like suppose it's covid and i know that someone is going to you know someone is i'm not sure if i'm going to meet the person now in for 9 months i haven't met someone i don't say this is your super objective i will say for example that you know um you are living in a place in which you are in the middle of life and death how do you feel what is how do you enact that what happens to your gestures you are feeling as if you are on the edge of a cliff how will you use your body you are going you don't know if you are going to survive after two days and reach your family take the first step towards your journey what's going to happen so i'm not telling the actor your super objective is that it's covid you have to reach your house but i am going into a very deep intuitive different ways of that person coming into the zone of fear of reaching their house of not being sure or maybe the person will die on the way do you understand uh, yes, when i'm saying this these are things which i have to you know only when i teach uh, practically it's difficult online but i'm trying to understand that this is more a way uh, like someone like michael chekhov he's not going to say that you know this is the achievement he will actually tell you that you know uh, you have entered um, the dark and you are spending the night on the road what happens to your body you know what is actually happening and uh, you know and you are you are hungry but you have a child and somehow you have to feed that child that two biscuits that you have so you know does your body curl up what happens to the rhythm and tempo which is very different from you know this very thing which the hollywood has taken up from like now this is you know this is how the, you this is what you want of this that's a very capitalistic way of looking at things whereas here the russians are you don't know even the russians look at the climate in which they live uh, you know and they have been through and the world wars and the break up of communism and being hungry and then having a lot so there's a lot of vagaries of nature and the stanislavsky system in its new interpretation is and even as it is 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 talking about multi layered playing it is not about one way or one single kind of way i mean there's a huge list which i teach i mean there's like 30 elements of you know play analysis i can't go into that just now and i could then tell you that how he would do it and how i have taken it on like today as a as an indian practitioner on sanislavski i hope that's little bit answered you what you want yes ma'am it is okay. it does right jolly pushari jolly pushari has uh, something jolly can you come up jolly pushari from hyderabad university ah okay yes i've taught there also for some time yes Julie, are you there? Julie, please unmute and ask the question. You can type it if you want. Yeah, he has typed it. He has asked actually. Uh, can you say something about your work with a group like in Sanahalli? It will be good. With whom? It's Sanehalli. Ah, Sanehalli. Oh. Right. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I was invited by C R Jambe, who was working in Sanehalli at that time, and um, the students were all residential. They were all staying. They were all from all parts of uh, Karnataka. So, um, and most of them were from rural areas, uh, not urban areas. So I decided to do, uh, you know, Devanur, Devanur's uh, Amasa, Amasa. If you've heard of the text. uh anyway so i took devanur's amasa and i also took a bit of lakshman gaikwad's uchakka and um we did a lot of work on uh you know uh, uh on creating spaces uh which were worshiped and creating spaces which were actually banned from coming from which people could come so we actually took like devanur uh, amasa's a beautiful a very poetic text in which he actually you know uh, sort of uh, 
dances in uh, through the entire city and going across uh, you know caste and he 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 explores that in pure movement and so i did a lot of work on you know uh, on texts which were closer to them i also did a, a same thing in the sense of you know work on their image on their home on what they think of parents what do they think of the sounds of their village what is the sound uh, how does the sound change um uh, what happened you know to the taste and the tongue was now they, some of them are in from south canada you know some of them from north canada west east how does all that change a lot of exercises around that um exercises on uh, uh, creating uh, you know uh, um uh, uh, spaces of violence during you know the time of um, melas you know you had the pandarpur mela in maharashtra so what are their equivalent of the melas that they have what happens in those melas is it only a place of worship is it also a place of violence you know so many many exercises were done over uh, you know over one week uh, uh, sorry i think it was 15 days that we worked with them and at the end of those 15 days they had to all individually all i think there were 20 students all had to you know uh, show a piece a poetic piece a piece from both the texts and they all worked in a group uh, so we did a lot of work around that okay kiran ji would you like to say something kiran patnagar our old friend is there kiran ji can i hear you yes. yeah please yes. thank you thank you so much Uh, namaste anamika ji <laughs> uh, lovely to see you yeah kiran ji uh, lovely to see you thank you <laughs> i um, saw your raj darpan long back and loved yes. it yes yeah thank you uh, so much kiran ji lovely lovely uh, to see you ha aaj aapko sunne ke baad bahut acha laga itne naye tarike ke experience jo generally maine directors ko nahi dekha aur nahi suna ji so it's it's uh, at this time of my life it's adding so much to theater i loved it and uh, we have banjara theater in mumbai yes yes uh -huh. so we can include many more things it's a learning point for us so today. sweet kiranji thank you so much ha huh? thank you rashi is busy with uh, another webinar so uh -huh. he is not hearing it लेकिन ये तो उनके पास रहता है तो आई विल आस्क हर टू सी योर थैंक यू आई एम सो हैप्पी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच किरण जी लवली टू यू नो रीकनेक्ट विद यू आई थिंक चंद्रदासन हैज रीकनेक्टेड मी विद सो मेनी पीपल टुडे लवली एब्सोल्युटली गॉर्जियस थैंक यू किरण जी थैंक यू चंद्रदासन जी टू यू आल्सो थैंक्स ज्योतिर्मय कुरु सीएस पुट अ क्वेश्चन ज्योतिर्मय कैन यू कम अप एंड आस्क आस्क दैट Uh, hello uh, ma'am uh, how how you uh, get actors for your production are they uh, already trained in contemporary theater or are they uh, focus more in traditional the uh, traditional training how how you bring all them together and how you progress your production uh, what's the process i just um, want to yeah 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 it's a long answer but i'll just in brief um see i work a last uh, year unfortunately um i have a very terrible de uh, debilitating disease of my knee which has uh, you know kept me a little bit now for the last two years but uh, you know i have actually trained over about 2000 people all over the country Uh, apart from nsd uh, you know so i'm saying that uh, so i all the time i'm engaged like I, i you know at one point you know uh, you know north west south east um i've traveled all over so i am in touch with a lot of actors uh, some very trained some not so trained um so that is never a problem because you're all the time you know in touch with them um barring the last uh, uh, well last two years i haven't been a because a covid is last one year we haven't been plus my knee has been preventing me a bit so one thing is so i know a lot of actors all the time the b is when i do a production um so some people i uh, who i know i may call and uh, then uh, some people uh, you know i think um, depending on the role i will invite them now uh, definitely i i take a mixture 
sometimes people who are very versed in 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 folk traditions and and traditional theater but some people who are very versed in uh you know interior um uh, traditions of psych psychological traditions they're very very fine you know interior actors they work very interestingly so uh sometimes i know these actors sometimes i take a chance i just invite them and we we work together we see how it is uh like for example the water which we saw now uh, uh joy was uh, was in nsd um uh, when i had done uchakka so he, he was someone i knew i knew he's been trained in a certain body uh, ramdu sahu i worked with several uh, years priyanka bopanna i worked in workshops adira uh, it was in nirikshya so i'm saying this was a group which i knew i knew their body i knew how they work sometimes you take a group which you don't know at all and you take a risk also that uh, and uh, but my my thing is i try and take very different people so that there's a very you know conflicting dynamism in the group so that it creates a kind of uh, you know energy in the group and 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 you start uh, yeah you know my my directorial work and my process is there is today not exactly the subject of today's talk but the and i have spoken about it in the christ college one right so i'm not going into the detail but that's a separate at lecture you know that what we do first i mean again how do we bring in bring in the collective how we bring the person closer to the tech i mentioned a bit in raj darpan and uchakka but we do a lot of exercises to bring the actors sometimes we invite people like in antar yatra we invited navte johar to work on yoga we invited rashid ansari to work on tai chi leela samson to work on the bharat natyam sometimes we we ask uh, like in huria we asked um, we wanted to use advertising and market so we asked a advertising man to come with us to a military man to come with us and teach our actors that what are the military positions how do you you know sell uh, you know the army and and all the advertising companies what is the way they sell their products so then our actors learn that get it so it's a very varied process yeah thank you thank you so much thank you and firak uh, has uh, typed a question uh, while forming the curriculum at nsdo you dig into natya shastra and try to make it contemporary how you have have you used natya shastra and uh, made it contemporary because the yeah, impact i want to tell you that i did not use the natya shastra because i am not a natya shastra person right because uh, uh you know i uh, i'm a contemporary theater person and whatever has come to me from the natya shastra via karanji uh, via looking at amanur chakya madhavan chakya i mean saying we have looked at all these people thai am so there are many things which have come to us subconsciously from the natya shastra but i have not particularly uh, you know um uh, really used the natya shastra consciously because my uh, you know i i would not like to say that because my training has not been of the natya shastra as i said it's a very contemporary training which has derived from folk and traditional theater given to me by uh, you know uh, uh, my uh, gurus then uh, but i have not actually used the natya shastra that is also being used by the way in the there's a whole section in which uh, you know institutions they invite people and lot of work has been done i think uh, du during even dr anuradha kapoor which they've asked could the atom experts kapila vat sign to come and do work depending on the natya shastra but and uh, that has not been my area of work um i i would like to use you know not to get into too many things you see if i am i'm not an expert on natya shastra i should not uh be trying to teach of course inadvertently many things that i am talking about for example drishya kavya the whole thing of the spectacle the visual the use of the body the poetry of the body and the space this is natya shastra right but i brought it into a contemporary context so definitely the natya shastra is being used because of course we used to do and sanskrit plays we had rita ganguly also talking to us and teaching us you know excerpts from the natya shastra right but the thing is that that's not my area of expertise but i think it comes in the visual poetic character of theater which the natya shastra talks about poetry is a very important part of the natya shastra that is definitely a part of my theater practice So, uh, in between, I would love to announce that you know the next week it is Prabir Guha speaking about the legacy of Bengali theatre, Bengali theatre, past and present. And the next week, 
it is margi mathu uh, one of the best uh, kudiyattam performer living right now speaking about apneya in kudiyattam so lovely, lovely. after 2 weeks we have uh, a little bit of uh, natya shastra and its usage yes. Yes. Uh, coming in in this uh, talk series so i just thought about that right yes. when yes. we are discussing yes. about it and uh, shivani wants to ask something else also shivani you can come and ask shivani yes sir uh, ma'am you have mentioned awareness about political science of your region either country so what do you mean by that see what i say to you is if i am entering for example let me give you an interesting discussion we had when the tripura regional center was being opened we had an academic council meeting and we had a big fight because i was saying you are opening a center in tripura do you know the history the politics do you know that it is 80% a tribal area then don't you think that the kind of things that you are bringing in there to teach you should be aware of you should call the people of literature of history of music of art from the tripura region and please don't go and tell them you know that you are the great uh, guy from nsd who knows everything you are not please respect the region that you are entering so i feel that even during my processes and during my teaching i and i was just i actually explained to you even during the thing of raj darpan we had lectures on colonialism we had lectures on racism we had lectures on what is called obscene what are the, what did the british bring in what was the theater that was existing so we combine and knowledge and we combine it with uh, you know um an an understanding of political processes today if i am doing a play if i do not know what is happening to women if uh, what is the the so many rape cases if i do not understand how to analyze that keep it in a context if i don't understand what is fake news what is the internet how is it being used politically do you understand if i if i am not aware as an artist you know of the way things are being used and misused in the processes of history and politics also it's become very now fashionable post truth because everything is a lie everything in whatsapp is a lie so what is but theater can fight post truth because there is no way. you are right there in your body and mind in that region you're training you have live people there's no fake there you can make community theaters you can travel and you can speak to people that is our community that is our theater strength and collective that we can counter this so i am saying that for me a person has to be aware a director or an actor too but definitely a director because i i basically train um, i'm more interested in training directors is that they have to be aware they shouldn't be foolish they should know what is happening and they should be steeped in it so that they can create a counter culture they can create a counter theater with knowledge so that's what i was saying thank you so much ma'am it makes Welcome. sense Welcome. yeah 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 anamika ji i would like to ask charakta has actually typed a question but i want to extend it further sure. now we have uh, in india around 60 universities at least uh, with theater courses going on you have been training in many of them starting from nsd to a very new place yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think about uh, means the current pedagogical system of uh, India? Uh, how it should evolve? I don't want to put it. We should have a system, one system like that. But uh, looking, I see, uh, Chandrasekhar is very difficult. This question, in many places, there has already, for example, in Hyderabad, you know, Anand Krishnan and Velichetti and Hamara Noshad, and there's been a lot of talk, and and you know. um I, i i it's a very very important uh, question that you are asking and it's difficult to answer you in one sentence but i wonder whether what we could do is that we uh, you know a lot of us meet have workshops discuss between ourselves those who with different kinds of training you know like if you have one kind of training i have another training let but the, the teachers should be willing what happens very often in smaller areas uh you know they don't want to know uh, your training 
they are very uh, you know insular and arrogant about the fact that you know they know it all not everyone but there are many uh, universities in which for example here in kalina in maharashtra they they invite you and and you know you have a chance of talking about uh, how they could train what they could do what are the ways that uh, could be developed uh, according to each region and the you know the, the the so i feel that there should be perhaps a lot of practical getting together you know uh, you know like you have in in very living very simply and each practitioner sharing their concept of their practices and culling you know like we did together we collaborated together to form this new syllabus i think collaborating together to form uh, different ways and it cannot be one way but depending on each region to find i mean that was the it was not a university thing that was the original idea of having uh, you know uh, also regional training centers that you yes. have region in which you have uh, you know skills but you also are talking about the regional specifics of the area you know but you also are having tools um, which can match up to um, uh, you know to contemporary um, living theater so that's quite a tall order because it needs a lot of training a lot of discussion which should happen i don't think it's happened at the university level i i see that now rubijida for to speak something and that's something yes, uh, yes. welcome rubijida please thank you thank you sandra dasan yeah actually this while mam is talking about this whole process of you know uh, process of uh, her learning process and this pedagogy in the context of russia and india i feel sandra dasan i am the one luckiest student you know uh, who got the chance twice in nsd i uh, i got classes on production process with anamika mam Uh, in the first year in national school of drama and in the second year i as a director students work under her uh, guidance you know on the russian text you know the cherry orchard you know uh, so this while she is talking about these seasons and then the senses and then in various kind of exercises and process of actors building and you know directorial process see everything was you know kind of a re revision in my mind you know again then while kirti mam came and talked about this you know i i think this from the time of kirti mam you know this all these new teachers like you know arjun raina i was benefited by this direct classes for many sessions of uh, arjun raina is very interesting after passing out from the institute i hardly get in touch with him in uh, social media otherwise i am not meeting him but every day you know while i am teaching or directing i am remembering his exercises you know it was so beneficial the time that he was talking about a pitch building understanding your own voice and culturing your own voice not trying to imitate or you know you know understanding your own voice you know these things matters a lot you know this i think this indian theater you know uh, i think this nsd curriculum has brought lots lots of changes uh with this anamika mam as a visiting faculty uh, in our period that time we didn't realize but now while i am practicing as a theater director and working here and there working in nagaland and with karbi people in assam in kerala and in karnataka in delhi in many places i realize and get a confidence you know get a confidence as a theater director you know while she talks about this bringing lots of languages by karanji to his theater and mam uh, while she talk about her own approaches connecting to karanji's approach i really feel like connected you know i then only i realize that yes there are some space for all kind of people in india it is not only about hindi you know absolutely you know i also pass six months in nsd crying every day because i smile everybody thinks that why i smile every day you know it was a question there you know why you smile while you see us you know we smile we are like this kind of people so that whole confusion was there you know cultural conflict was there but yes. uh, you know this going through all this trouble tone process in a uh, 3 years and also you know it was really difficult you know understanding india you know accepting all kind of people in uh, one national institute it is Absolutely. so complicated i think nsd while i go to nsd to teach or some i rarely go because i went to work with the repertory company twice and directed one production recently with third year students i had really realized in something like you know uh, there was something missing like you no know, there is missing this connectivity you know i feel you know it's like that we are not connecting uh, you know these regions are not connected in somehow 
and then culturally we are not connected we are again coming back to hindi and you know hindi you know yes hindi is a very important language at the same time you know this connecting this malayalam language and at the same time this bengali language assamese you know punjabi in all these things are very very important things you know uh, but i'm really feel like you know those plays like uh, raj darpan i watch in live you know this repertory company nowadays the students watch this plays in the video by i got chance watching raj darpan in live huria i watch in live idiot i watch in live and that but antar yatra i definitely watch in uh, videography only but this this kind of plays really this kind of process really opened our mind and i think if i'm not getting this anamika mem's process or arjun raina's process to opening up myself you know this khalid ji's process of open your body you know be yourself then then i think i won't be able to stand myself as a theater director and you know this whole struggle you know i could not, could not have been ready to um, as mem is talking about this old school of theater you know old school of teaching and new school of teaching you know with this uh, in the time of kirti mem's uh, directorship in national school of drama i think i really can uh, see the difference you know this i was also student of bm sa i was also student of anamika mem and you know this khalid ji and also arjun raina there is a whole difference of understanding theater interpreting theater Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, Robijita, this means a lot coming from you. I need to tell you that I mean, Robijita is really one of our very brilliant directors which have come out, and I, I, it, I am really, really happy today. And uh, Robijita did some fantastic work when we were working in NSD. I, I mean, she on Cherry Orchard. It was very symbolic and very different, and I got very excited actually when I saw your work. but uh, you know and uh, and she was also as she said she was also you know in conflict <coughs> now the question which was asked before that why political and historical now the thing is i was very sensitive because of my sister who was a human rights lawyer who was fighting against the army in northeast so i knew i may not know the detail but i knew somewhere the background from which many of them were very political background they were coming from they were being pushed into nsd then you know uh they had these different people telling them different things so it was very difficult very confusing and uh you know how and what path will you take and you know so that but that is the whole thing that when you are actually grappling with your own identity with your own regional identity with your own creative identity and you know i and i and i think it's fantastic now i have seen one of your works quite recently uh two three years ago and i hear from everyone see that is that whole grappling that cultural grappling with different tools a different uh, aspect which has uh, formed you and, and and has made you today into you know one of the most exciting directors coming out of northeast and and see that's the point and of course i i know i used to offend a lot of people because i was pushing them and saying you know try this and no this is not working and go for it and people would say like what on earth is she doing there sometimes they would walk out or they'd get angry or you know a lot of things even robijita and i've gone through periods of not talking and many things but you know that's part of the process of enlivening and questioning and uh, you know and the main thing is that ultimately what is your work like you know is it create and you yeah. were always there right there you were always uh, you know doing fantastic work already when you were a student you know your sensibility was different you were working culturally from a different zone and that's my thing that let us bring in these identities but we don't want to be ethnic like we don't want to wear you know i don't want you to wear a, a mekla and say oh you know i'm manipuri that's not the point let's let's understand the culture of manipur of assam of not only assam then let's see that if it's you know if you are from a tribal zone you're different than if you're from you know if you're from a muslim background you're different so every background it gives you a different uh, perspective perception of uh you know the community and the life and i think that 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 pedagogy must try and push you to i mean i don't know enough let's say uh, you know about assam but you do and i can give you the tools to say go back and say ho oh, let's let's look at my history hey look let's look at my tapestry my embroidery like let's look at the way people move and you know she's saying something very interesting uh, chandradasan which in she's saying it and my sister made me aware you know a lot of people like um, my brother in law is a naga his house was attacked by the army if you look at his house it has bullets all over 
they will never say like the kashmiri will say oh my house was attacked and the kashmiris are melodramatic the nagas will say laugh and say oh you know the army came and ha 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 they attacked my house she's also saying this she's in you know she's right there in uh, in nsd she's going through the thing but you could never see what was happening inside so culturally same thing with you know we always make fun of the mallus chandradas and i have a lot of friends you know that among the mallus are like hi hmm and yaar kya hai what is this what is a hmm what why don't you you know go beyond that so there's a cultural expression that you're not like to this but that i have some of my best friends are like from kerala best friends like you know and so culturally the ways of expressing are different your happiness your sadness your anger why do we teach this you know television acting in which if you're crying then you're going ha and if you're going angry then you're going ha so this is also stereotyping i'm very glad you raised this question uh, robajita that yeah you were going through this but you know you were keeping it in yourself it was you know you were going through that whole conflict so it, very important that when you teach you may not you can't teach everything because you are not god but you can make people aware that go back to your region and see how they emote uh, you know the emotions are and reactions to situations are different they're not the same so that is very important yeah ks rajendran was uh, hearing you in facebook ah. uh, and he has typed a question there okay. i'll read it uh, for you Uh, Dr. Anuradha Kapoor made NSD really national by bringing in students from all parts of India. The pedagogy changed. The search initiated by Kirti Ji was continued. What do you think we NSD alumni should do to continue this search? What do you think we should do to continue this search? Yeah. What do you think the NSD alumni should continue to do this search? I think NSD alumni should get off their backs. and for god sake please go and travel go and work with people go and learn from people learn respect them and respect their traditions understand more you know and then use whatever technique that you have learned to uh, you know help them enhance themselves and enhance you you know i think that's what we should be doing and from that you will learn a pedagogy the pedagogy does not come from sitting at home and you know uh, and things so i uh, definitely um, i think this is from traveling from respecting from meeting different people of walks of life observing their temperament their body their culture of training yourself all the time even today with my knee problem and uh, you know i uh, have a lot of medical problems but uh, i will always engaging in some practice you know it may be yoga or pranayam today at 61 i may not be able to do you know uh, martial arts and but so i'm saying according age appropriate reading learning traveling addressing people learning from them continuing them and bringing that back and feeding your students with that you know wherever they are it may be nsd it may be anywhere because unless that whole freshness is there uh, you know uh, rajendran we've all rajendran and i were all studying together under karan so he knows and he's been a dear friend but i'm saying that all this has to come it's not in the air you know it's it's hard work it's 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 engagement continuous engagement and uh, jodish mg has put another question jodish mg uh, put a question in uh, facebook and uh, he said that uh we have a great deal of uh, theater training uh going very good in india but uh, we don't see a very great production as such uh, uh, uh jyotish you are right uh, there are very great productions we have some lovely young people today i mean which you all know uh, you know you you yourself jyotish you have you know shankaran you have deepan you have uh, you know the, among our generation chandradasan jambe raghunandan anuradha kapoor neelam 
uh, Abhilash uh, uh, Pillay. There are a lot of people who are doing very, very good work. And I'm, I'm many people who I'm not mentioning also, because I don't know a lot of the younger generation, which I haven't met uh, for the last years, because I haven't traveled as much as I usually travel in India. So th a lot of productions are happening. But my only thing is because of finance, people are not being able to travel with their productions. Mm -hmm. And I always requ request everyone that please travel because all this conversation, if you do not see the work, how do you create an alternative language? Most of us don't have access to money. So we do 10 shows and we stop or we do 15 shows and we stop, right? So it's important, uh, you know, to travel uh, across India with your work. What happened? Across India with your work or across your own state with your work. And uh, so productions are there, but remember, it's a huge country. You know, it's a very big country. Um, uh, you know, and 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 some interesting work in every corner is happening here. Also, young people. You may not like the work, but then Sujay Saple, Atul Kumar, uh, you know, uh, Mohit Tal Talkalkar. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I, and there are many more who I'm not mentioning. I, again, in in Kerala, there are many apart from the names I'm mentioning. But um, uh, the thing is that you, uh, there has to be some means by which we can all see each other's work. That is what is, uh, you know, of course, I always, if I know that one of in, in some young person who's really interesting one does try and come and see young or old or whatever. But the opportunity is not so much there because of finances. But so if we can somehow, I don't know how, um, travel more and be more fluid in our work so that other people can know this new language. Uh, you know, but even if we don't travel all over India, we can travel around our own state so that young people, uh, uh, Jyotish, when I started working, I was telling Deepan this also, that you guys are fine. When I began with DIY, people used to harass my actors. Why are you working with this woman? She doesn't know anything about theater. Antar Yatra people boycotted me saying that this is not theater. What is this? I wanted to show you the beautiful, we did a, a a lens for Antaryatra. It opens and the eye goes to 25 feet. I've sent uh, Chandadas in the photo, but you know, you travel 25 feet beyond, you know, so you're seeing something here. It completely defied the proscenium space, uh, you know, and it, so it was working there, complete experimental done by my painter friend Archana Shastri from Baroda. So many things have happened, uh, you know, but then I didn't have the money to travel with the canopy. So I had to, and that was the canopy was the main thing. This whole thing of eyes traveling, tra people traveling beyond, uh, you know, the, the poetry from Basavanna, Tamil, Kannada and Hindi. There was a lot of stuff going on in Antaryatra, but it is a problem of funds. So, um, yeah, we definitely need to sweep many more people. But sometimes we don't see the work and it's actually happening there. Like you may not have seen Robert Jita, but she's doing work. Or I may not have seen your work, and but you're doing work, you know, or, or Surjit or so many people who, you know, may not come into the mainstream, but they're doing work uh, and they're doing great work. Sauti wants to ask something. Sauti, please come in. Uh, Ma'am, Namaskar. Namaskar. Uh, actually, it's always a lesson to listen. Uh, I was studying in NST from 1998 to 2001, okay. and and unfortunately I I missed you as my teacher. But uh, I think one thing which in, uh, which you introduced in NST that is the production process. G, G. And uh, production process is something. In the beginning of your talk, you have already mentioned the essence of awareness. You, you, you caught what I was saying. Yes, yes. Yes. So, and uh, the the problem which uh, which um, the Robidi has felt, the same thing also happened to me because because I came from Kolkata, uh, and the struggling with the language of Hindi, oh, and yeah. your own identity. Because in the beginning, you say for around two months, I used to yeah. say. Main ja rahi hun, main kha rahi hun. Yes. Because, because I was not aware about the gender. She's doing And I think production process is something that which actually helps break the, the socio-economical, political and the religious barrier of the students. Absolutely correct. And that actually helped us to bring 
our own confidence and that actually shaped our life in the rest of the two years the second year and the third year uh, when we were doing uchakka uh, and i was in nsd repertory company so i used to peep in your rehearsal you <laughs> you didn't know about it <laughs> yes <laughs> and uh, and sometimes i used to talk with sandeep da also acha lovely right uh, ma'am uh, actually it's not a question i think it's um, uh, actually it's a query that when you work as a guide as a mentor as a teacher how it is difficult to transform the an urban body of an actor to the rural or vice versa very nice uh, question very nice uh, question for example uh, matlab when you work with joy the joy already has a grooming of uh, a body right and and i think it uh, it's not just a body but it's also get into the soul of it absolutely absolutely so how how you find it that to transform this body grammar and the uh, and the uh, the urban to rural and the rural to urban what is your comment on very that? nice question and in fact uh, this was raised by uh, you know we uh, uh, anuradha ji was kind enough to uh, you know allow uh, the students to go all over maharashtra with the, with uchakka now we got a very interesting reception in nanded the entire um, audience of about 1000 people were all from the community of utsalyas and no one had any problem with the play and uh, in fact that, that's another story but in aurangabad we had a lot of uh, uh, people from uh, uh, dalit philosophers dalit um, uh, you know writers who came and they said something very interesting they said you know when we saw uh, the group we said that these are all swarns as in these are all they look like they're upper caste mm. uh many of them it happened to be that that particular batch was kind of fair and i i don't know whatever it is so there was this huge question so i told uh, uh, and he was told to shut up by some of the very fine dalit writers this person who raised this question and we had a huge argument on this i said do you mean that if i am doing something on dalit i have to take someone who is dark who looks like this who looks like that and who looks like this this is a question i raise to you mm. is it not that the person in fact who will never get into the shoes of that person that person theater enables that person to enter actually the body of someone he will never maybe enter if he's a very typical middle class you know actor from nsd who wants to only go to you know bollywood and that kind of stuff how do you enter that body and must we take stereotypes like you know uh, this kind of body and this kind of uh, you know uh, complexion so in fact it was good that this was an and let me tell you i always uh, say this that there was huge opposition to the play apart from you know joy and a few others no one wanted to do this text because it's not a fancy text you're getting into the bodies of people who are deprived who are struggling who are violence the police there's you know all this sort of stuff happening so the first thing is that because um, i for two weeks with lakshman ji he said anamika tum jao varkari tradition dekh ke aao so i actually went to pune and anirudh was with me we actually went and saw the varkari tradition of music we saw the body how it was working how was the way they were playing then he said i'm calling all my pickpockets so he called six pickpockets real pickpockets who are mm-hmm. working and and they could be caught by them, but they trusted me and he said i'm calling them they will teach you how they pickpocket their body their gestures this thing we documented it so we brought that documentation to the nsd students and 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 we brought the instructions that they gave that you know we live in constant fear right so the first exercise is constant fear how you have eyes here you have eyes here you have eyes at the back you have eyes in front what's going to happen any time you can be shadowed any time the police can catch you any time you can be uh, whipped and 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 killed and and uh, put into prison 
So that was one of the first exercises to bring that body, which is very confident, good, you know, middle class body, to try and understand to get it first into that super conscious state in which you know. Then how? Then okay, now you know you you're going to enter a space which is banned. You all whole generations have never entered a temple. How do you? I I made them cross a line. I just put a line. So you cross from being you, and you cross the line which is banned, and you enter a space which your generation has been deprived of. What happens to your body? So the pickpocketing became a bit of a joke, you know how NSD. So everyone's loving it. Chal, isko pickpocket kar, usko pick up. No, you're pickpocketing. You're hungry. You can be beaten. You can be beaten. You can be. Be What happens to the body? How do you protect yourself? Mm. You understand. So mm. for me, it was also a big learning to try and devise specific exercises so that NSD students can understand and get into that body, even if, whether they're upper class, upper caste, anything, you know. And some of them were very physically trained. Some of them were not. Some of them are very much into text, as you know. Some were, know some of this thing. And then, of course, I I got uh, someone like Anusha to also make them do. Exercises on choreography, on working, on running, on on you know so that the and and on being shadowed. So a whole set of exercises were actually done to start bringing in that body, to be close to that body, you know, which was being. I mean, we had fights again because I told you if you remember there was a scene in which the Brahmin women are shitting, and yes, all yes, these, yes. And these guys are uh, you know. Eating pork, so the Brahmin women are saying, "Hi, hi, what a badbu and all that." And these guys are saying, "But you're shitting in the place that I'm eating." So I told the girls to, you know, to show the hips. Yeah. I mean, not the real hips, but we made imaginary hips, and they were shitting there. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, "What nonsense! What is this?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pune, everyone threw a fit. In Pune, when they saw the, what is this? It's a very dirty scene. And Nandir, where there was the people from that coming, they were like, "His." Terrible! They went mad looking at this, saying that this is a. It became a comedy by the end of it, you know, because it's part of their life. So what's the big deal, you know? So there's a lot of work in which we, you know, we divide. I divide. I put in a lot of work in devising specific exercises for which, of course, then you have to be very. You have to know. You have to respect the text that you're getting. I mean, I'm not saying I, I you know, I, I may make mistakes. I may do the wrong thing, but I try very hard. i try very hard to come close to to that uh, you know to that reality thank you thank you sir that's a lovely question yeah so uh, we may take uh, the last question anybody else would love to ask a question or a comment before uma uh, will be speaking uh, so uh, is there any question in facebook uh, posted can you find anything anybody else with any any other questions or comments please namika ji uh, it's so wonderful um uh it's really uh, i didn't learn anything but it's uh, making me to understand more further how i should develop my work and everything so i have seen um one of your training uh, um where this uh, vibadi uh, meeting you work with two the actors uh, doing some buto exercise or something like body work and everything yeah so that time onwards i like the way how you train the actors uh, i felt you are more friendly with them and you understand their body and you work with them so the body is moving but uh, when you are as a director i felt more comfortable how we are working uh, working with your actors giving right. space as well as energy and everything freedom and everything so absolutely so, huh? yeah so it's very nice uh, pushing everything to the actors sometimes some directors i'm not saying everyone sometimes it feel actors is uh, up to here how to breathe getting a mental block 
Yes. Uh, sometimes uh, we don't know how to move also. I don't know how to walk also. Sometimes we get stuck. Yeah. But the way you work, I feel more interesting. You understand the act, actor's body. So that way I liked very much. But this section is uh, how much I should work more. <laughs> That's the punch. And yeah, you're such a wonderful artist. It's been, I've seen you work and your work is beautiful and very inspiring. So you don't have to at all worry about anything. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah. It's a very uh, blessing thing for us to stay this uh, Sundays. So <laughs> Chandra Das Ji is giving more opportunity for the young actors how to see, uh, listening and seeing things. It's a very good section for us to get to know more. Otherwise, it's very difficult to... Actually, digging work. This is the real creation of consciousness which Chandradas is actually doing through his work because this is what we need in a vast yeah. country like ours. This coming together, this sharing, this creation and working constantly. That's the only way we can all actually, uh, you know, create an alternative culture to, you know, to this very mass, horrible, uh, commercial kind of work that is starting to come into the country, you know. Yeah. It's a very nice eye, eye open for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, one, one good thing that happened with this talk series is that there's a lot of communication between different people from different parts of yeah. the country, uh, from great working masters to very young people, and the free interaction, yeah. very informal, very friendly, free interaction and discussions. We okay. may agree in certain points, we may disagree in certain points. Right. That's, that's not sort of normal, but this has developed a kind of uh, relationship between theatre people and uh, I'm very happy that you know, it's working like that and it's all because you know theatre people have that kind of a habit of uh, friendliness uh, yes. collaborate, to talk, to discuss and to be friendly and uh, um, that's it. So uh, I think... Uh, I totally agree with you Chandradasanji and hello Anamika this is hello. your classmate, Hema. Oh, hello, Hema. <laughs> How are you? How are you? I am very fine, and it's, I'm so delighted to hear your uh, talk. Uh, well, I've been, um, I've been uh, associate professor of, of acting at National School of Drama, so I was very much interested in the pedagogy. Uh, here, um, uh, I, I'm so sorry, I couldn't hear the earlier part of your talk. Uh, that is uh, uh, your training at uh, at Moscow, but uh, uh, I I just don't know whether it is ये ठीक होगा बात पूछना कि नहीं एक तो मैं पहले बात करना चाहती हूँ कि जिस तरह से कीर्ति जी ने हम सब लोगों को लाया वो बहुत ही thank कहना thankful हूँ मैं उनकी मैं मैं आज जो भी teacher हूँ तो मैं कीर्ति जी की वजह से हूँ पारसी style और Music or poetry. Maybe poetry pe bahut kaam karti rahi hai. Uh, cool, yeah. Sorry, I'm calling you Miku because oh, yeah. uh, that comes to my. Aise nikalta hai mujhe. Main ek baat janna chahti hu ki jaise main poetry pe kaam karti thi pichle 20 saal se school mein to wo speech ki class hoti thi. To usme aap of course as abstract uh, visuals or इमोशंस और सब चीजों पे बहुत सारा काम करते थे और उसमें क्या होता है कि पेडोगी में सिर्फ सिर्फ आप शब्द और एक्टर की देह और उसकी आवाज या वो स्पेस जो एक खाली होता है उसके साथ काम करते थे आई हैव नॉट द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू वर्क विद देम विद कॉस्ट्यूम्स विद विद मेकअप विद मेनी अदर थिंग्स सो आई यूज टू एक्सप्लोर द स्पेस You know this the yeah. studio yeah. and their speech and their body. क्या क्या ऐसा कोई तरीका हो सकता है जो आप poetry पे आपने काम किया जैसे कि इस तरह से भी काम किया जाए कि बहुत सारी चीजें ना हो तो भी क्या आप काम कर सकते हैं? हाँ बहुत मतलब अभी जो last हमने काम किया था पानी के ऊपर जो नाम दे घसाल that work um uh, that Sorry, is not seen that, huh? almost almost uh, the whole thing was in fact with the whole with the body but the gesture became very important shabd hai na shabd ka jo wazan hai the conflict of the word that gets transposed like if he saying that uh, you know 
um, um, where is the water? Where is the water? Pani kaha hai? Hamari liye pani hai nahi. So what is the cadence of the of that word? What does it do to your gestures? So we we worked a lot. In fact, we hardly had any set. We had a space. Magar hamne, you know, you then you work with the gestures. You see what the word, where the word is pushing the body, where the word is pushing the gestures. Uh, what is the pitch that you are using? So you know, you and and how you know the word actually pushes the actor into certain spaces. So there's a lot of work you can do even without having to make it into you know like a, a production or a piece or something like that. There's a lot lot of work, you know, and. Um, um, uh, poetry is sort of one of the best things that, as you know, since we share a common heritage, of course, with your uh, father being a great poet and Karanji all the time used yeah. to say, poetry is one of the finest tools to create. Yeah. You must read poetry. You must yeah, know yeah. poetry. So that's something which is very important. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miko. So thank you. Thank you all for coming in and uh, interacting and especially thankful to Anamika. We'll continue to talk. There are more questions coming in, but you have to stop somewhere. Uh, when somebody like Anamika is there, very okay, very experienced, very original, and totally different from from many other people, there'll be more questions, And uh, but we have to keep it and we'll uh, do it. So uh, I have to thank you all uh, for coming in and participating. Next week, 11 a.m., we have Prabir Guha speaking about uh, the legacy of Bengali theatre up to the present and the contemporary, means plays it in the contemporary uh, theatre scenario. And the next week, we have Abhinaya in Kudiyatam, uh, maybe a lecture done by uh, Margi Madhu, one of the most important performers living right now. And before winding up, uh, it's over to Uma Chakravarti Ji to speak something uh, and uh, wind up the session, Umaji. No, I just, uh, I was uh, so delighted that I got to know about this. I got to know from my daughters uh, rather than, I missed all your, uh, your earlier um, sessions, which I might have enjoyed, uh, but I'm glad I came in for Anamika. Uh, I'm not a theater practitioner. I have watched some theater, but I've been a teacher and I taught for 40 years in an undergraduate college. And I have to say that, Anamika is a brilliant teacher. I mean, she's just fantastic. You look at her, she uses her body, even when she's speaking, she's telling you things and so on. She's like, she's the complete theater practitioner, including the theater practitioner's teacher. I really enjoyed the session. And I think that, you know, you see, I think the spirit of theater as it uh, can stultify on the other hand, on one hand, and it can actually expand and take you on so many journeys. Uh, that's something that I've got out of this session. The fact that it's not about only social reality, it's also about the interior and how that interior person uh, responds to the social reality and how between them, you know, they become something else. I think that's, uh, that's something that's been quite fantastic. I really uh, appreciate your style and so on. I regret that I haven't seen so much of the new work. So it's like so sad, but what to do? I mean, uh, I live in Delhi and I catch whatever I can of you, but I, I've missed everything, you know, I've missed all of it. Delhi only for so many years, except for some absolute this thing. So I'm going to come and look you up anyway. <laughs> Thank okay. you. You Thank are you. not only my teacher and inspiration, but you are my sister's inspiration. Oh, no. <laughs> so lovely. So lovely. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Chandra Hassan also. Chandra Dasan. Okay. Chandra Hassan, all the best with all the work that you are doing, all the great work in theatre and raising consciousness and training and everything that I really wish you from one practitioner to the other. And this is great and, and a great uh, luck for your future. Yeah. Yeah, we, have to, we have to talk more and uh, maybe come to our space when the corona is... <laughs> Oh, we have a space where you can stay and work and uh, we have developed a space here. You're welcome. We have not talked much. Briefly, once uh, in Binale, when you put up the show, and the once when I came to NSD, yes. with my play Karnavaram, you waited and then talked, to, talked back, etc. So, any last word from you before winding up, Anamika Ji? Um, I, uh, I, first of all, uh, you know, I'm not, I, is that uh, as uh, today in the e times that we live, uh, 
um, really, really all of us uh, who are doing theater, I think the importance of theater comes to me even more than it, where it is almost becoming like crucial because it is one medium which you can't, you know, fake. It is one medium which has a direct address to people through people. It is one medium which is a collective medium. So all of us who are there, please, uh, in the previous days, now I feel we are all much more, maybe something is being taught to us. We are much more friendly, you know, willing to listen to each other, not into, you know, petty egos, which were there when I was, let's say, beginning my practice. There are many of us. And uh, I mean, I'm very grateful to all of my people who have supported me, my contemporaries, my the younger directors. Uh, and um, I feel today the younger people, it's time, uh, you know, to be very strong and strengthen your practice in its myriad forms, not to try and do a homogenized form, to actually go out there and to form communities and community theatres and to do and continue work, because this is one way where you can stop a lot of the kind of um, 